Welcome everyone. I'm glad you've joined me for uh, our all church Bible study. And that means everyone can be a part of it. All ages, backgrounds, perspectives, doesn't matter. We're just glad that you're uh, uh, joining in on this uh, wonderful study of 2 Timothy. It's uh, the last study in a series of uh, studies on the pastoral epistles. So we've looked at 1 Timothy, the book of 1 Timothy. We've looked at the book of Titus. And now we're finishing up with 2 Timothy. And uh, so if you're new in the process, great. I'm glad you're with us uh, and that you're joining. But uh, you can always catch up by going on our online platform uh, where we have our online classes and watch and go through uh, 1 Timothy or Titus. No problems. I'll throw up the address for you to find it online. I'm John Schulte. I'm the pastor of Christian Education and Discipleship at RB Community Church. And uh, I'm just uh, taking you through the study of uh, 2 Timothy. So we're going to begin there. Uh, and so you can always catch up later uh, with First and uh, First Timothy and, and Titus. Wonderful books. It was a great study. I appreciate all the the comments and uh, you know uh, talking we had together over those. And I look forward to going through uh, this uh, this last of our studies in Second Timothy. So let's jump in because we've got a lot to cover. I, I'm trying to keep all of these studies to, as close as I can to about uh, 30 minutes. So uh, that's a, you know, your commitment. I know some people are doing it in small groups and that gives you an opportunity to, to listen, but then also still participate with a discussion in your small groups. Or I know some people have contacted me and said that they're doing the study as a personal uh, Bible study. Great, uh, fantastic, and I'm glad you're doing that. So I try to keep it, you know, so there's some time for you to reflect on it and also uh, to spend some time in prayer. And, and even, uh, you know, and I always put a prayer or a hymn at the end of my studies. The, today we're going to have a special hymn at the end of the study, so make sure you're, you hang on through the study for that. And you can even sing. I, I certainly do. Uh, and I know Pastor Brian does in his own personal uh, you know, times of uh, devotion with the Lord. And so here is an opportunity for you to sing uh, as an individual uh, and or uh, with your small group in a wonderful hymn that you'll find at the end of our study. All right, well, uh, good. Okay, let's, uh, let's kind of jump in and you want to get uh, your, your Bible and join me. And, uh, you know, I, I just really believe in the kind of Bible study that, you know, that marks up your Bibles, okay? So, uh, I know, I take my pencil, some people take highlighters, whatever. I think that's all good stuff. Write down notes or at least have a, a notepad with you so that you can, uh, you know, write your notes down, whatever. However, you can get into the Word and get the Word into you. That's the, you know, that's the key thing. So... Uh, but uh, follow along with me. We go this this study, as have the other uh, two books that we've looked at in the pastoral epistles. Uh, are, we 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 move through kind of you know each verse at a time, and I try to pause, uh, noting any significant uh, uh, words that Paul used. Uh, he, the book of Second uh, Timothy, as well as First Timothy and Titus, were all written in Greek. And Greek is a very expressive language, uh, and we're thankful that God used that language for His inspiration in, you know, in His Word, uh, because it really can capture some very deep things. Unfortunately, uh, the English language is a little bit more wooden than Greek, and so uh, we got to kind of go back to the original Greek and capture the nuance of the words that, uh, that the Apostle Paul used. And that helps us kind of grasp, really, the depth uh, of the scripture. So I'm trying to do that for you and, and I'll pause as I go through and we'll talk about certain things and of course I always put the word up there for you uh, on the screen and then show you you know what I've underlined and maybe you find something else. The you know, Holy Spirit inspires you uh, to something else which is great. Let me know because I'd love to know you know hey I you know Pastor John I thought this was really uh, you know, uh, an important uh, part of this verse or whatever, you know, or this really spoke to me, the Holy Spirit really spoke to me through this. I love to hear. No problems at all. So as long as we're in the Word, I guess that's the, the important thing, right? As long as we're in the Word. Well, I want to give you a little background 
on uh, Second Timothy before we uh, jump into it, uh, verse into the different verses. Uh, it's a fascinating book, uh, and it's much different than uh, than First Timothy, and it's also much different than Titus. There's a different spirit and feel to this particular book, uh, and uh, you know. Uh, when we went to First Timothy, and I'll let you watch those videos, I'm not going to go into all that again, but uh, there was a real uh, sense of instruction to Timothy about the challenges uh, that he has in Ephesus. He's, he's uh, serving a, a church that was having some difficulties uh, in Ephesus, which was a real uh, Roman, Greco-Roman town, a city, a metropolis really, uh, that uh, was a very important trading center in the Roman Empire and a wonderful place to have a church because it had a very influential uh, part and the church itself was pretty influential and important. So um, that book was more of an instruction to Timothy about how to deal with uh, some of the folks who were causing some issues in the church. This second Timothy that was written now about five or six years later is completely different. And the reason is that Paul's circumstances have changed as well as there was a change in Timothy. So in 1 Timothy, the book was written to Timothy, obviously, but it was really Paul writing to Timothy and through Timothy to these folks that have some issues in the church to you know, kind of correct uh, and redirect what was happening in the church to bring that church back to health. This second Timothy, the second letter that he wrote, is much, much different. It is really written directly to Timothy. Uh, and, um, and so, it's, it, 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 again, it's one of the pastoral epistles, so it's very pastoral in nature. This is not a, a doctrinal book. Uh, Paul uh, had every faith in Timothy, as we'll, we're going to see even in this first chapter that we look at, that Paul, that uh, Timothy was, uh, you know, raised in a way that he understood the doctrines of the church very well. He was very competent on that. Pa Paul certainly wouldn't have put him in this situation uh, and in this ministry had he not been. So that's not that's not really the issue here. Uh, and there are still some issues uh, going on in uh, in the church, uh, but. But the, uh, the feel of it is much, much different. And I think it's because of Paul's circumstances. Now, some of you may know that Paul in his life was in prison twice, maybe even three times, but we know for sure that he had two imprisonments. One was more of a house arrest. He could have people coming in and going out, and, and he wrote a lot of letters to, to folks. And, and some of those letters, like just like in First and Second Timothy, he wrote you know, like First and Second Corinthians and, you know, all, all the rest of them. Uh, so he would write one letter and then later he would write back uh, to maybe, you know, recorrect some things or adjust some stuff that he had heard about since the last letter that he wrote. This isn't the case in First and Second Timothy. But anyway, in his first uh, imprisonment, uh, which was more of a house arrest, he had a little bit more freedom uh, and um, and so, uh, right after he was released from that prison, he wrote 1 Timothy, and then he wrote Titus. Now, uh, five or six years later, he's in his imprisonment again in Rome. Uh, and this time, it's completely different. Paul is in a, uh, a cell, a uh, cold, dark cell in chains. Uh, what had happened, the uh, Nero, Emperor Nero, had come to power and he was very critical of the Christians. Uh, he persecuted the Christian greatly and Paul got caught up in that persecution. And in that process, uh, Nero scattered the Christians out of Rome and throughout the Roman Empire, just like it had happened really in Jerusalem. A lot of people uh, scattered out of Jerusalem when there was a persecution when the church first got started. And, uh, and in some ways, that uh, actually, instead of stifling the Christian faith and evangelism, actually helped it to grow because those people who escaped persecution went out 
<laughs> sharing the gospel along the way and these Roman roads and all the Roman system and uh, language and money and, and uh, economics helped uh, people spread out quickly throughout uh, the, the known world and share the gospel. And so that was one of the things that really helped the church. But in this case, uh, a lot of Christians uh, fled Rome because of Nero. Paul got caught up in it and was imprisoned, but a lot of his friends uh, left. And uh, I think uh, most scholars believe that the only person that was really with him uh, was uh, the doctor, Luke, which probably was a good thing because Paul was in this rat-infested, dark hole of a prison in chains. And uh, so here he is in that situation, and he's writing to Second Timothy, or he's writing Second Timothy to Timothy. Now, also, Paul was pretty sure that he wasn't going to be released. He wasn't going to get out of this. This was the end of his life. He, he knew that nothing good was going to come from this, uh, from, as, as, you know, from the standpoint at least of uh, his own uh, earthly life. Uh, he would be martyred uh, for his faith. And he was well aware of that and that it was coming fairly soon. So he writes in that Vain, you know, he 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 writes with that kind of a cloud, and it, and and uh, you know, I've never been placed in that position where I know my life might be taken, uh, but in this case, I I believe that that Paul was very reflective on his life and service and the legacy that he was leaving, particularly with those he really loved and uh, was trying to disciple out into leadership, and of course. Uh, Timothy was right top, number one up on that list. So I believe that Second Timothy was written more uh, from Paul's introspection of his own life and legacy uh, and uh, concern for Timothy to carry on the faith, carry on that mantle of leadership uh, that Paul had and he was a little afraid that Timothy was beginning to slip a little bit. And it's quite possible that Timothy was. Timothy had a, a, a pretty challenging uh, situation like, like Titus did. Uh, he was facing a pretty big mountain, a lot of problems, and now he's six, five or six years into it. Well, you know, um, when I think about that, five or six years into a very tough ministry, you know, the average ministry uh, today is uh, four to five years, and uh, then pastors usually move on. And it could be that uh, Paul, that uh, Timothy was experiencing that kind of a drain, that kind of being worn out, and uh, was ready to say, you know what, that, that's enough. I'm, I'm done. Uh, trying to you know do the work that it needs to be done here in Ephesus, but but Paul uh, wanted to encourage him and uh, help him see that if he continues on, uh, you know good things will will still happen. That the you know that the ministry can still be be carried on. So don't don't give up. That that was it. And 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 you know you're kind of this. I mean it's Paul was kind of saying you know you're you're my legacy, you know, you can't give up now because my life is going to be gone, but you will be here still and you have to carry on this good work. Uh, don't let it fall away. Don't let it all go to waste what we've done here now uh, in the faith. So that's really kind of the theme that, um, that uh, that's here for, for Timothy. He was fearful that Timothy was kind of weakening spiritually. Uh, all right, um, another kind of famous thing that comes out of uh, this book, there's a couple of them, we're going to run across one of the most influential and powerful passages in all of Scripture on the inspiration of Scripture. So we'll come across that. That's kind of a highlight that comes out of Second Timothy. Uh, and uh, we're also going to uh, come across a beautiful hymn uh, that was uh, in Timothy. We're going to do that today because that's in chapter one. So we'll start off right, you know, we'll get a start, start off running right at the top. All right, so that gives you kind of the background for this, uh, this beautiful passage uh, in work uh, of uh, the Bible uh, that we're so uh, thankful and lucky to, uh, uh, to have uh, in, uh, in our canon. 
All right, let's start right off with the greeting in Chapter 1. We're going to try to hit all of Chapter 1 fairly quickly here. Uh, chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, it says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, according to the promise of life in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. So, Paul again says the apostle of Jesus of Christ Jesus. He, you know, he, he's establishing again his authority. He loves Timothy, as he said in verse two to Timothy, my beloved son. He saw him as a son. It was he was, you know, his uh, discipled one. You know, uh, that was uh, his legacy there. So, um, but he was still an apostle, uh, and he is then the one with the spiritual authority. And he's reminding Timothy that uh, because he has that spiritual authority, that it should be, uh, you know, inspirational Timothy to follow his mandates, you know, to, uh, to be following through on that. And then, of course, uh, to Timothy, my beloved son, what a beautiful uh, passage and a warm passage there for how loving uh, Paul felt towards, uh, for, you know, for Timothy. Uh, and it really means a lot to him. And he's very, very concerned uh, about it because he doesn't want Timothy to fall away. Uh, he doesn't want the work that, that Timothy's doing go for naught. Uh, he really wants to encourage him. And so he does. So right at the second verse, right, right off the bat, in the beginning of the book, he says, Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. He gives Timothy a blessing. Now, he goes in to remind Timothy about his family and heritage in verses 3 through 7. I thank God, whom I serve with a clear conscience the way my forefathers did, as I constantly remember you in my prayers night and day, longing to see you, even as I recall your tears, so that I might be filled with joy. For I am mindful of the sincere faith within you, which first dwelt in your grandmother Lois, and in your mother, Eunice, and I'm sure that it is in you as well. For this reason I remind you to rekindle afresh the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but a power and love and discipline. Uh, wow, all right, so he just starts right out uh, reminding Timothy, this is where you come from. Don't forget your roots. <laughs> Don't forget your root. Don't forget where you come from. And uh, he, he's, I thank God for whom I serve with a clear conscience. You know, he knows. I've done everything I can, even to the point where I know my life will be taken, but I'm standing firm, all right? The way of my forefathers, as my forefathers did the faith, and he's talking about, you know, the forefathers of the faith, right? That which we inherit. We are in this whole you know, line of saints, right? Uh, you know, that, that beautiful picture uh, of those saints who were, were in this chain, you know, and all those who, who have gone before us, who are Christians who have gone before us, uh, are in fellowship with us uh, and we with those in the, in the future. We're a big family that's never, you know, that uh, always sticks together. And this cloud of witnesses, as Paul later says in other verses, uh, in uh, his other writings. And then he just reminds uh, Timothy that he constantly remembers you know, him in his prayers uh, night and day, longing to see you even if I recall your tears so that I may be filled with joy. The tears when he had to leave uh, you know, and Timothy was placed in that position uh, in Ephesus and then Paul had to move on. The, uh, he's reminded of that time. Just remember our friendship and how close we really are. And it brings joy to Paul uh, to remember those good things. And then he's mind, he, he goes back to say, hey, I, be mindful of the sincere faith which you have. And it was because of that faith that Paul put him in that position. And it's a faith that came from his mother and grandmother. Uh, wow, what a legacy that his mother and grandmother laid forth, you know, through them. And that, that reminds us of how important it is to disciple our own children, right? How important it is to share the gospel with our children and disciple them along, because uh, that will only have positive things that will happen in the future. Uh, and so uh, Paul reminds, you, you know, 
You know, he says to Timothy, you, you've been steeped in this. You know what is right. You know what your calling is. You know, don't, don't shy away. Don't fall from it. Stay firm. And of course, then he says, for this reason, I'm reminding you. I'm reminding you of your roots. I'm reminding you you're in this big chain, you know, of believers, uh, past and present and, and future, a, a chain of which we are a part. Isn't that great? We're, we're going back to Timothy and Paul. We're in that same uh, chain. Uh, but you know what I'm reminding you? In a, a faith that was instilled by your in you by your mother and your grandmother who are in that chain, you know. So I remind you to kindle afresh the gift of God. Kindle afresh. And uh, that, you know, he, had, he was getting tired. He was worn out. He, you know, he'd been at this now for five or six years, and it's tough going. There's no doubt about it. I mean, I'm not trying to play down Timothy. He, he was a young guy, and he's sitting here, you know, working really hard, and it's easy to get kind of cynical or used up or just tired of it all, you know, and just wanting to call it quits. But Paul says, no, I want you to rekindle afresh the gift of, of God, he's talking that gift, particularly the word gift there are spiritual gifts, by the way. The spiritual gifts, well, what did he have? He had preaching, he had teaching, he had evangelism. We learned that even in First Timothy. You know, rekindle those gifts, get back at it. You know, start using when you begin to use your spiritual gifts, your spiritual dynamicism, you know, your your uh, spiritual life will pick up so many people walk around saying, you know, I just don't feel the Spirit. I don't feel, you know, like my Christian faith is going anywhere. Well, are you using your spiritual gifts? <laughs> if not, listen to Paul. Rekindle it afresh, and you'll be surprised at how the Spirit will begin to move in you, and you'll feel closer and more connected to God. Uh, and then, of course, he says, which is in you through the laying on of my hands, that is his ordination that he, he received, uh, so be true to your ordination, for God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power and love and discipline. We need to be disciplined in the faith, uh, staying with it, you know. Uh, and so that's the important thing. Now he goes on in verse 8, Therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord or of me, his prisoner. You're reminding Timothy, I'm in prison here. You know, I'm in chains for what I believe, but I'm sticking with the faith, just like I want you to stick with it too. Uh, but join me in suffering for the gospel according to the power of God. You know, you're going to, I'm suffering too. We're all suffering. And we're going to support and encourage each other through this common suffering that we have. Now, let's be mindful of that, but do not be ashamed. This is a theme that kind of runs, you know, under the, this whole uh, book. Not be ashamed. And Paul has used that in so many other places, and he'll use it again later in this book too. But, uh, but it, right away when I saw that, I underlined it because it reminded me so much of the beautiful passage in Romans chapter one, verse sixteen. Romans chapter one, verse sixteen. Let's let's pop over there for just a minute. Romans chapter one, sixteen. I already have it underlined because it's such a powerful verse, uh, and uh, actually even go on into seventeen. It says, "For I am not ashamed." of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first, but also to the Greek, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, but the righteous man shall live by faith. Yeah, that's why we're, we're, not, a, we're not ashamed of the gospel, because the power of salvation, it brings people to eternal life. And, uh, and that righteousness that we share reveals the true faith, and when we share it, our faith, it's faith to faith, our, you know, it passes on, just like your grandmother, your mother and your grandmother, you know, passed on their faith to you. So you stay with it, don't be ashamed, and pass that on to those people in Ephesus. Uh, that was uh, pretty important. And, and then in verse 9, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to your works, but according to his own purpose and grace which was granted to us in Christ Jesus from all eternity. Now I underline, call us with a holy calling. All of us have been called, set apart, and sent into the world uh, so that 
faith to faith can be made, you know, that we can preach this righteousness, not according to our works, not according to what we want. This isn't about what you want, Timothy, not about what we want. It is then his own purpose. It is God's purposes. That's the only thing that matters is God's purposes. And our job is to see that God's purposes come about and that we're a part of that. And that's what Timothy was saying. It was so easy for us to get into our own thing, you know, and think about our own, what we want and how direction we want of our lives to go or ministries to happen or however that, uh, you know, might be. But the fact is that it's nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with His own purpose. And that should be our prayer. Father, may it be your purpose, not mine. Help me understand your purpose. Help me see your purpose in this. Help me set aside my own desire, my own direction, so that I might see your purpose, because that's what needs to be accomplished. And then verse 10, But now has been revealed by the appearing of our Savior. We have seen that before, how he writes about that. I love that, where you know Christ appeared, Jesus Christ, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. That's the real light. This You have eternal life in Christ Jesus. This is a synopsis of the gospel. He's just reminding Timothy of what he's preaching and teaching, what his purposes are. You know, stay with it. Be true. You are shedding light in darkness. That's the key. And there's a lot of people, as Isaiah said, there's a lot of people sitting in darkness. And we are to be a great light to those people. Uh, and so uh, that's what you need to be. Continue to do that, Timothy. Come on. Verse 11, for which I was appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher. And basically in that verse, Paul is saying, hey, listen, I, I'm telling you this not because just you. It, it goes for me too. I, I'm under the same thing. I'm not telling you anything that I'm not supposed to be doing. It's not my purposes. It's God's purposes. I have to set aside my own desire. I'd rather not be in prison and in chains. I'd rather be doing something else. But it's God's purposes for the fact that I can be a light to bring the gospel to dark from the in, out, you know, in the darkness. To abolish death and bring life and immortality. That's what that's the purpose that I need to be about. And then he writes again in verse 12, for this reason I also suffer these things. Okay, again, like I mentioned, he's, you know, I'm not telling you anything that I don't live by. But I am not ashamed. And I underline that again. Here it is. He's continually reminding. Look at Timothy. Man, don't be ashamed of the gospel. Stick with it. Be strong. Don't be timid. Have this confidence in it. We all need to hear that message desperately, don't we? We all need it because we are all feeling like Timothy at times. We're all worn out. We're tired of you know the hassle it is that we get for our Christian faith or to share our faith with someone else, and how sometimes we're made to feel, you know, that we're, you know, not intelligent because we hold on to the Christian faith, or how can you believe that, you know, bunch of hocus pocus or whatever, you know, I've heard those things too, and yet he says, no, nope, don't, don't be ashamed, stand up for your faith, and then he writes. And I know I wanted to get to the end of the chapter, but we're not going to. We're just going to end on this one uh, because we're running out of time. But this is so beautiful. It is so beautiful. Sometimes Paul writes so poetically, and you're just so moved by it. You, know, you read those passages, and you have to stop because it affects you emotionally and spiritually. You know? And this is one of those times where you get to this, this passage, you know, verse 12, but the end of verse 12, he starts out saying, For this reason... I also suffered these things, but I'm not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I'm convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. Folks, if, if you don't underline anything else in this whole book, you've got to underline that passage. And from that comes the hymn that you're going to be listening to in just a minute. It's a beautiful hymn, and it really brings to I don't even have to share anything more about this passage. Uh, just listen to the hymn. The writer of that hymn wrote out exactly what is Paul's concern, what 
Paul was trying to say to Timothy and what he's saying to us as well in that beautiful hymn. So uh, that's where we're going to end today with those words ringing in our ears and also on our voices in praise. Let's praise God together. I know.